If you drive south from Be'er Sheva in Israel, about 40 kilometers into the Negev Desert, you'll see something that shouldn't exist. A second sun, floating above the desert floor, glowing so bright you can't look directly at it. This is the Ashalom Solar Tower. At 260 meters tall, that's 85 stories, it's the tallest solar power tower in the world. And that glow you're seeing? That's 50,600 computer-controlled mirrors reflecting sunlight onto a single point, heating molten salt to over 550 degrees Celsius. But here's what makes this engineering marvel different from every solar panel you've ever seen. It generates electricity at night. Long after the sun is set, when solar panels go dark, this tower keeps pumping power to 120,000 homes because stored inside in massive tanks is enough thermal energy to run for hours in complete darkness. Now, I know what you're thinking. Cool tech, but solar panels are cheaper. Why build this? Here's why this matters to you, wherever you are. This is California's energy grid. The yellow line is solar power production, massive during the day, zero at night. The blue line is actual electricity demand. See that gap in the evening? That's when everyone gets home, turns on AC, starts cooking dinner, charges their electric car. Solar panels are useless. We burn natural gas instead. This problem, called the duck curve, is getting worse as more solar gets added to the grid. And it's not just California. Australia, Germany, Spain, India, anywhere with lots of solar faces the same crisis. What do we do when the sun goes down? Ashalim isn't just a solar plant, it's a time machine for sunlight, and it might be the blueprint for how we actually power civilization 24-7 with renewables. Welcome back to Grand Structures. Today, the engineering, the economics, and the brutal challenges of building a tower that stores the sun. Traditional solar panels, photovoltaic or PV, convert sunlight directly into electricity using silicon semiconductors. They're amazing. Costs have dropped 90% in 20 years, but they have one fatal flaw, no storage built in. When the sun shines, you get power. When clouds pass, power drops. When night falls, power stops. To store that electricity, you need batteries, lithium-ion batteries, and they're expensive. A Tesla Megapack storing three megawatt hours costs about a $1.5 million. To power 120,000 homes through the night, you'd need hundreds of millions of dollars in batteries that degrade after 10 years. Concentrated solar power, or CSP, works completely differently. Instead of converting sunlight to electricity directly, it uses mirrors to concentrate sunlight and create heat, massive amounts of heat. And heat can be stored cheaply in salt. Yes, molten salt, the same stuff you put on your fries, except at 565 degrees Celsius, 1050 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's the engineering breakthrough that makes this possible. Molten salt can store thermal energy at 98% efficiency. You heat it up during the day, store it in insulated tanks, and it loses only about one degree of heat per day. The salt mix, 60% sodium nitrate, NaNO3, 40% potassium nitrate, KNO3, melting point, 220 degrees Celsius or 428 degrees Fahrenheit. Operating temperature, 290 degrees Celsius, too cold, to 565 degrees Celsius, too hot. This eutectic mixture stays liquid across a huge temperature range without high pressure. It's non-toxic, non-flammable, and dirt cheap. It's basically fertilizer, the same salts farmers use to grow crops. Storage cost comparison per kilowatt hour. Lithium ion batteries, $200 to $300 per kilowatt hour. Molten salt thermal storage, $20 to $30 per kilowatt hour, 10 times cheaper. This is why concentrating solar power with thermal storage could revolutionize renewable energy. The storage is built in and costs a fraction of batteries. Let me walk you through how Ashalim works step by step. It starts with 50,600 computer-controlled mirrors called heliostats. 
Each mirror is about 20 square meters, roughly the size of a parking space. Every heliostat has dual-axis motors controlled by GPS and solar tracking algorithms. They adjust every few seconds, constantly repositioning to reflect sunlight toward one tiny target, the receiver at the top of the tower, 260 meters up. The math is insane. The computer calculates current position of the sun, changes every second, each mirror's exact location in the field, atmospheric refraction, light bends through air, wind loads, mirrors must tilt into wind to avoid damage, optimal focal point, minimizing light spillage. All 50,600 mirrors update continuously. The precision is sub-millimeter. If you're off by even 0.1 degrees, your reflected beam misses the receiver entirely. At 260 meters tall, the Ashalim Tower is taller than most skyscrapers. For comparison, that's 50 meters taller than Seattle's Space Needle. The tower itself isn't generating power, it's a structure holding the most important component, the receiver. The receiver is a massive heat exchanger made of thousands of thin tubes through which cold molten salt is pumped from ground level. As concentrated sunlight hits it, with an intensity of hundreds of times normal sunlight, the salt heats from 290 degrees C to over 550 degrees C. The energy density hitting the receiver is mind-blowing, about 600 to 1,000 kilowatts per square meter. That's equivalent to having 600 to 1,000 electric kettles boiling in a space of a coffee table. The receiver glows like molten metal, white-hot at the center. But operating at these extreme temperatures creates brutal engineering challenges. The receiver tubes are made of special high-nickel alloy steel, and every morning, when the system starts up, those tubes go from 290 degrees C to 550 degrees C in less than an hour. That's 260 degrees of thermal expansion. Metal expands when heated. The receiver tubes literally grow several centimeters. If the engineering isn't perfect, tubes crack, salt leaks, and you have a catastrophic failure. In 2016, America's Crescent Dunes Tower, using similar technology, suffered a molten salt tank leak that shut the plant down for 10 months. Ashalim's engineers solved this with expansion joints, flexible pipe sections, and constant monitoring. Sensors track tube temperature, pressure, and flow rate 24-7. Any anomaly triggers automatic safety protocols. Once the salt is heated to 565 degrees C, it flows down from the receiver into the hot storage tank. This tank holds millions of liters of molten salt, enough thermal energy to run the turbines for four and a half hours at full capacity after sunset. Two-tank molten salt storage. Hot tank, 565 degrees C, three to four million gallons capacity cold tank, 290 degrees C, 3 to 4 million gallons capacity. Heat retention, approximately 0.5 degrees Celsius per day, insulated. Cycle life, 30 plus years with minimal degradation. The beauty of this system is its simplicity. Hot salt goes into the hot tank. When you need power, you pump hot salt through a heat exchanger to make steam. The cooled salt, now 290 degrees C, goes into the cold tank. Then you pump it back up the tower to be reheated. It's a closed loop. The salt never gets consumed or degraded. The final step is converting heat to electricity. Hot molten salt from storage flows through a heat exchanger where it boils water into superheated steam at over 150 atmospheres of pressure. That steam spins a conventional steam turbine, the same kind used in coal or nuclear plants, connected to a generator producing electricity. Ashalim power output. Nameplate capacity, 121 megawatts. Annual production, around 320 gigawatt hours per year. Homes powered, around 120,000, assuming 2,700 kilowatt hours per year average. Capacity factor, around 30% versus 20% for solar PV without storage. That 30% capacity factor is key. 
solar PV in the same location might achieve 20 to 22 percent because it only works during daylight. But Ashalim can generate electricity into the evening peak demand period. It started commercial operation in September 2019, and it's been delivering power ever since. Okay, let's talk money, because engineering marvels mean nothing if the economics don't work. And this is where concentrated solar power has struggled. Ashalim Plot B Tower Costs Awarded price in 2012, 0.79 NIS per kilowatt hour, or 22 cents per kilowatt hour. PV at the same site in 2019, 0.31 NIS per kilowatt hour, or 8.6 cents per kilowatt hour. CSP is two and a half times more expensive than PV. Wait, you're telling me this incredible tower with molten salt storage costs two and a half times more than boring solar panels? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. So, why did Israel build Ashalim if PV is cheaper? Three reasons. Reason number one, dispatchability. PV generates when the sun shines. Ashalim generates when you need it. During evening peak demand period, 6 to 9 p.m., when electricity prices spike three to five times, Ashalim is producing at full capacity while PV is producing zero. That 22 cent power during peak hours is actually cheaper than running natural gas peaker plants. Reason number two, grid stability. As solar penetration increases, grids become unstable. Too much PV during midday crashes electricity prices, sometimes to negative. Too little in evening requires rapid natural gas ramp up. CSP with storage smooths this out. It can ramp up or down just like fossil fuel plants. Reason number three, strategic energy independence. Israel imports 97% of its fossil fuels. Every kilowatt hour from CSP is one less that requires imported gas or coal. In a region where energy security is national security, that's worth paying extra for. But I need to be honest with you. CSP with storage is struggling globally. As of 2024, there are only around 6.5 gigawatts of CSP capacity worldwide, compared to over 1,000 gigawatts of solar PV. Why is CSP struggling? Capital costs remain high, $4,000 to $6,000 per kilowatt versus $1,000 to $1,500 for PV. PV plus battery costs are falling faster than CSP costs. CSP requires large land areas with excellent direct sunlight, deserts, complex to operate compared to PV, moving parts, high temperatures, limited supply chain, few companies build CSP components. Where CSP might win? Regions with very high solar radiation, Middle East, North Africa, Australia, grids requiring multi-hour storage, 4 to 12 hours, combined with industrial heat applications, desalination, mining, markets valuing energy independence over pure cost. Here's a nightmare scenario. Molten salt freezes at 220 degrees Celsius. If the plant shuts down unexpectedly, power outage, equipment failure, sandstorm, and salt cools below freezing point, it solidifies in the pipes. Thousands of tons of salt, now solid rock, blocking your entire system. Clearing frozen salt requires shutting down for weeks or months, heating pipes externally with electric trace heaters, and carefully melting the salt without cracking pipes. Crescent Dunes in Nevada suffered catastrophic salt freezing issues during commissioning. It's one reason the plant ultimately failed commercially. Ashalim Solution Redundant heating systems to keep salt above 240 degrees Celsius minimum. Emergency diesel generators for pipe trace heating. Automated freeze protection protocols. Weather monitoring to prevent shutdowns during cold snaps. There's a darker side to concentrating 50,600 mirrors onto one point. Anything flying through the beam gets incinerated. Birds that fly through the concentrated solar flux experience temperatures over 500 degrees Celsius. They ignite mid-flight. Environmental groups call CSP towers megatraps. 
Studies that California's Ivanpah plant found hundreds of birds killed annually. They mistake the bright receiver for water bodies and fly toward it. Ashalim has similar issues. Mitigation efforts. Acoustic deterrents. Sounds that discourage birds. Visual markers around the exclusion zone. Reduced flux during migration seasons. Ongoing monitoring and adaptive management. It's a brutal trade-off. Build renewable energy to save the climate, but kill wildlife in the process. There's no perfect answer. Operating in the Negev Desert means dealing with sand, dust, and extreme temperature swings. Every speck of dust on a mirror reduces reflectivity by 0.01 to 0.02%. After a month without cleaning, efficiency can drop 5 to 10%. Ashalim employs automated cleaning trucks that wash mirrors with demineralized water. It's a constant battle. And water use for cleaning in a desert, that's its own sustainability problem. So after all this, is the Ashalim Tower a success or a failure? The honest answer, it's both. What Ashalim proves, CSP with molten salt storage works at utility scale. Solar power can be dispatchable and replace fossil fuels 24 seven. The technology is mature and reliable when properly engineered. What Ashalim also proves, CSP is more expensive than PV plus batteries in most markets. It only makes sense in specific high radiation desert locations. It's complex, requiring skilled operators and maintenance. Despite the challenges, CSP isn't dead. Dubai is building the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum solar park with tower CSP and 15 hours of storage. Saudi Arabia is planning multiple gigawatt-scale CSP projects. China is investing heavily. India is exploring CSP for mining operations. These projects work because they're in deserts with 2,500 plus hours of sunshine per year. High direct normal irradiance, DNI, greater than 2,000 kilowatt hours per meter squared per year strategic need for dispatchable renewable power, government support, or long-term power contracts. Here's what Ashalim taught me. There's no single solution to climate change. Solar PV is cheaper during the day. Batteries are getting better, but still expensive. Wind is great, but intermittent. Nuclear is reliable, but controversial. CSP with storage is a tool in the toolbox. Not the answer, but an answer. For specific places, specific grids, specific needs. Israel built Ashalim because they need energy independence. California might need it to solve the duck curve. Chile might need it for mining. India might need it for industrial heat. The tower glowing in the Negev isn't just generating electricity. It's proving that we can store the sun itself. And in a world desperately trying to quit fossil fuels, that matters. Would you support building a solar tower like Ashalim in your region, even if it costs 2x more than solar panels to get 24-7 renewable power? Or would you rather invest in PV plus batteries and hope they get cheaper? Let me know in the comments. Until then, stay curious, stay ambitious, and remember, the future isn't built by choosing the cheapest option. It's built by choosing the smartest combination of tools. See you next time.